Hi everybody. So in this video, we are going to go over some questions from Unit Five, Module One. Um, basically, predicting the reaction direction using energetics and entropics analysis of reactions. All right, let's start with this question. Um, okay, I certainly carried out a certain reaction at two different temperatures. He found it to be product favored at 300 Kelvin, but reactant favored at 390 Kelvin. All right, let's see what's going on here. So at low temperatures, it is product favored. At high temperatures, it is uh, this reactant favored, okay? If that is the case, the product should have a lower potential energy. So here's reactants, my, here are my products. Um, we know that products must have a lower potential energy. Why? Because that state is favored by a state uh, that that state is favored at low temperatures. So products have reactants have a higher potential energy and the reactants have a lower potential energy. All right. If that is the case, we are going from a higher value to a lower value. Well, for the change in potential energy should be negative. Okay, so or the change in H must be less than zero just because we are going from uh, a higher value to a lower value because the difference is final minus the initial. The final value is smaller than the initial value. Therefore, the value must be negative. Now, for the correct answer is option C. All right, that is that and. Which energy diagram most likely corresponds to this reaction? So let's take a look at that. And for this case, remember we are looking at the energy diagram here. Therefore, the entropics do not matter. What matters is only the energetics, so the potential energy. Okay. And if it is an energy diagram, we always start from the reactants on the left hand side and end up with the products on the right hand side. So for that reason, we can eliminate options A and uh, B, okay, because in the in, in A and B, we are starting with products and ending up with reactants. That is not the convention. We start with reactants and end up with the products. The it must be between option C and D. And then to analyze the potential energy, uh, we look at the bond strength. In the reactant side, we have some AA bonds in hydrogen. And then on the product side, all of these bonds are AB bonds. Okay, so these are polar AB bonds tend to be stronger than non-polar AA bonds. If it is stronger in attractive interactions, then it's gonna have a lower potential energy. Okay, on the other hand, uh, the non-polar non-polar AA bonds tend to be weaker usually, meaning it's gonna have a higher potential energy. All right, so we know that the products have a lower potential energy than the reactants. Therefore, our answer must be option D, not C. Okay, so let's mark that. Moving on to the third question. Uh, rank the following substances in the order of increasing potential energy. So the potential energy is all about the bond strength again. Uh, and then in this case, we have one ionic compound. So the sodium hydroxide is an ionic compound. And then two covalent compounds or covalent molecules, hydrogen and H2O. Okay. Uh, ionic compounds have the strongest attractive interactions between the ions. Therefore, they tend to, ha tend to ha have the lowest potential energy. Therefore, options A and D are out. So it must be between options B and C. And then, uh, because the ionic compound should have the lowest potential energy because of the, the strong interactions uh, between the ions. And then between H2O and hydrogen, H2, uh, we have A, so uh, in H2, we have AA bonds, non-polar AA bonds. And H2O, we have HO bonds, which is polar. So the polar bonds tend to be stronger than the non-polar bonds for that reason. Uh, H2O should have a lower potential energy than H2. Therefore, uh, hydrogen or H2 should have the highest potential energy, which is option B. Okay. Option B selected. Next question. Which of the following PEG diagrams likely corresponds to the following reaction? All right, let's take another screenshot and see uh, what's going on here. All right, right now we're 
we are evaluating the uh, the energetics and entropics because in the peg diagram we have potential energy and number of configurations. Okay, so first let's start with the uh, uh, the potential energy. Okay, so on the reactant side we have all AA bonds, and then on the product side we have all AB bonds, which are stronger, they have a lower potential energy. Okay. And because of that, we can say that say that the the, the the products have a lower potential energy than the uh, reactants. Why? We have stronger bonds containing compound containing compound in uh, on, on the product side. Okay, that is uh, that is in energetics. Now in tropics. On the reactant side, we have one nitrogen and three hydrogens, meaning four gas molecules. And then on the product side, we only have two gas molecules. When we have more gas molecules, it's gonna have a higher number of configurations, so higher entropy. Now for entropy wise, or the number of configurations wise, um, again, reactants have a higher number of configurations than the products. Why? You have more gas molecules, right? So if you draw the peg diagram, potential energy, number of configurations, the reactants must have a higher potential energy and a higher number of configurations than the products. So it should look like this. And that seems to be option one or um, option A. All right, moving on. Question five, what is true about the following reaction? Um, Okay, let's take a screenshot one more time. Okay, so in this reaction, let's do the, uh, in it, this is again like a big diagram analysis. Okay, we need to analyze both energetics and entropics. Uh, first, the energetics, we are going from some AA bonds. Okay, here, hydrogen, we have AA bonds, which is non-polar, therefore tend to be weaker, weaker. Okay, uh, to all AB bonds, subpolar so AB bonds tend to be stronger. Okay, so stronger bonds means it should have, stronger bonds have a lower potential energy and the weaker bonds have a higher potential energy. All right, so ener energetics wise, so potential energy, uh, products have a lower potential energy than Reactants. So the energetics favors uh, energetics favor the products because it has a lower potential energy. Okay, so that's that. And then when it comes to entropics, right? We talk about the gas. On the reactant side, we have one, two, three, four, four gas molecules, and on the product side, we only have one gas molecule. We are going from more gas to less gas molecules. Okay, more gas molecules means more number of configurations, so more entropy. Now for the number of configurations, so entropics wise, um, okay, reactants have a higher number of configurations than the products, okay? So the entropics favor the reactants because you have a higher number of configurations and entropics favor, uh, in energetics favors the products because it has a lower potential energy. Entropics favors the reactants because of the higher number of configurations in the reactants. And energetics favors the uh, products because it has a lower potential energy. All right, so that's what we have. Let's see the options. The formation of the products is only entropically favored. That is not true. Products is not entropically favored. Reactants are entropically favored. The formation of the products is only energetically favored. That is correct because you have a lower potential energy in the product that is favored energetically. The formation of the products is favored both by energetics and entropics, that is not true. The formation of the products is not favored uh, by energetics, nor by entropics. That is not true either. So option B is correct. Okay. Moving on, question six. What is the sign of delta S for this reaction? 
So the change in entropy, so when it comes to entropy or the number of configurations, gas is called the shots. Okay, so let's analyze the gases. So we have on the reactant side, two gas molecules. And then on the product side, we only have one gas molecule. Okay, so we are going from a higher number of configurations on the reactant side to a lower number of configurations. Okay, so reactants to products. Reactants have a higher entropy and the products have a lower entropy. Okay, delta S is a change in entropy when you go from reactants to products. That is, uh, in other words, the entropy of products minus entropy of the reactants. Okay, you can think of it like that. Okay, you, because the products have a lower, um, lower entropy, we are subtracting a larger number from a, a smaller number. So it's going to be a negative number. Okay, we are going from a higher to a lower value. Therefore, the change must be negative. Okay, so delta S is negative. All right, so delta is positive, delta S positive is out. We already know that delta S must be negative. And why? Uh, the only reason is the products have a lower number of gas molecules. Let's analyze the first one, the first option here. It's negative because the products have a smaller number of gas particles that is correct. And option C, just for fun, it's negative because the reactants have heavier, you know, it doesn't matter. It's not even heavy, that is not, uh, yeah, the heavier um, particles which have a higher number of configurations. Okay, so this is not the uh, primary factor, okay? The primary factor is the number of gas molecules. Number of gas molecules is greater on the reactant side compared to the product side. Therefore, we are going from a higher entropy to lower entropy, meaning we are decreasing entropy, meaning delta S is negative. So the correct answer is option, uh, option A. All right, last question. Uh, what is the most likely sign of delta S for this reaction? All right. So in this case, we are breaking a CF bond and then on the reactant side, and then we are forming a CO bond. CF and CO, if you look at the electronegativity values, carbon is 2.5, carbon is 2.5, oxygen is 3.5, but fluorine is 4.0. So the electronegativity difference in the CF bond is 1.5, and then for CO, is, it is 1.0. Because you have a greater electronegativity difference in CF bond, CF bond is going to be more polar than CO bond. Therefore, uh, it's going to be a stronger bond. CF bond is stronger than the CO bond. And right? that's the idea. If it is stronger, you need to provide more energy to break that bond on the reactant side than the energy released when CO bond is formed. Therefore, there will be a net energy absorption. If there's a net energy absorption, uh, it's going to be an endothermic process, so the delta H must be positive. Okay, that should be the idea. Okay, the other way to look at look at this is CF bond, which is broken, has a lower potential energy, and CO bond, which is formed, has a higher potential energy. You are going from lower potential energy to higher potential energy. Therefore, the, the change in potential energy is positive. Okay, so the change in potential energy is positive. So uh, that's the other way to look at it. Okay, so it must be between, uh, we can, give me a second, something going on here. Okay, delta H negative is out. So that is B, options B and uh, D. And in the two options where they say the delta H is positive, why? Uh, let's look at option A. Delta H is positive because CO bond is weaker than CF bond. That is correct. Uh, delta H is positive because CO bond is strong. No, that is not correct. CF bond is stronger than, uh, than the CO bond. Therefore, we need to provide more energy to break that bond. That's the idea. So the correct answer is option A. All right. So that's it. Let's see how we did. We're gonna submit our quiz and yep, that's how we get 100% for that quiz. All right.
uh, that's it for this uh, set of problems. I'll see you guys in class. Bye, everybody.